I was talking to a researcher up in Canada who said he was observing about like seven new behaviors that has never been documented before in bed bugs as he was uh, watching a colony. And so I, there's just all kinds of stuff we're still learning. And um, they're not limited just to the bedroom. They can be anywhere in, in a structure. I was at a place yesterday, and they're in the kitchen. I mean, they go throughout the structure. So wherever people are and spend time, they'll tend to find bed bugs there. Now, this is the part that scares people. They can survive up to 18 months without a blood mill. So they can go to diaspora or, or a type of hibernation, slow down all of their body functions, and just wait it out until the food source comes along. Quick question. You said you seen some yesterday. How do you find them? I mean, they look so small. How do you find them? We'll, we'll talk about that. And, and if we can hold questions towards the end, this, uh, the only reason I say that is this uh, presentation, as we get more into it, you're going to have lots of questions. It probably garners more questions than any presentation I've seen. And so uh, that way there's time for those of you. All right, so this is the life cycle. We have the egg, and we go into a first stage nymph. That's fully engorged, so it's full of blood. And we go into our second stage. Here's our third stage. <clears throat> Does anyone ever deal with German cockroaches? Does anyone ever live in an apartment that had them, or had a service a place, or seen a place with them? Just one? Okay, well, <clears throat> the reason this is important, that looks just like a German roach nymph. And they're about the same size. And so what this means is you can have someone that might be pretty used to roaches, say in an apartment complex, and see these and think, oh, that's just roaches. You know, unfortunately, people, some people learn to live with roaches, and it's just kind of it's part of what they have to put up with. Um, and they might not do anything thinking it's just a roach and it's bed bugs. And so that delays control right there. So half the blood, after they've they fed on us, they lose half of it through defecation within about five hours. If you've ever seen bed bugs, they leave these little black dots. Spiders leave little black poop dots underneath their webs, and you know, flies will leave little black dots. The difference is with the bed bugs, it's going to be a raised bump. It's just blood. So if you go and you take a wet paper towel and you wipe it over it, it's going to smear. That way, that's one way you can tell it. You know, you see a black dot. I've gone to the apartments and ever I mean I, I spent like three hours in one apartment and this lady showed me every piece of lint and speck of everything. You know, one was bed bug like fecal matter. But that's one way you can tell is if you smear it, it'll uh, or get it wet, it'll smear it, just like blood. Alright, now why am I gonna talk about bed bug mating? The reason is it has something to do with their biology where to look. Okay. They mate through a really horrible process. Male bed bugs are probably one of the worst male species of insects ever, or animals, or whatever, okay? They mate through something called traumatic insemination. So he doesn't even use her reproductive tract. He decides, I'm just going to go outside of it, and he injects straight through her abdomen wall. So his sexual organ, if you can kind of see it here, is like a serrated knife. Just pierces through her abdomen and injects the sperm in, and then through her body absorbs that, it actually goes and fertilizes her. But it's really, as the name says, traumatic. And multiple males will mate with her. And until she's gravid, which means that she's been fertilized and now she's pregnant, she can lay eggs, they'll keep doing that. So if she doesn't get the heck out of Dodge fast, <coughs> she's going to die. It will kill her. And so if you think about it, if you think you have a bed here, okay, and they've fed, now you have females, they're sexually mature. The males go after them. Are the females going to stay right around the bed while they wait to become gravid? No. They're hightailing it out. So if we only look right around the bed, we're going to miss something. We're going to miss those females. We're also going to miss possibly the areas that they're laying eggs that are going to be off site. So that's why it's important that we understand why and how they mate. Sometimes the males will even traumatically inseminate each other. They just kind of go crazy. I, I have a little colony and I watched them chase each other around inside there until they would catch each other. I mean, it was just like, you know, a cartoon. They were just going nuts. And so it's important to know that they're not always going to be just right away where you think they are. So what makes them active? Okay, CO2. Okay, as we exhale carbon dioxide, that means, okay, we're a warm-blooded creature that has 
you know, bloodness. That means we 